I noticed that now and then, despite strong trust, love and devotion to the tantric path, I get suddenly moments of doubting everything. It's like someone suddenly pulled the rug of all of my beliefs and trust in Dharma, and I am in, in a free fall, not knowing what to grab at now. What is the best way to work with this energy? Give me the best way. <laughs> so how many people have the same issue? <laughs> Inconvenience. One. Definitely, lots of times. Yeah, I know that one. You are not the only one. Yeah, so first of all, we are not yet awakened being. <laughs> Did you know that? But the practitioners are training on the path of awakening. This means our human ego will inevitably face challenges along the spiritual journey, especially spiritual journey. It's a part of process, right? When we come to the spiritual practice, we don't engage in spiritual practice to make ourselves comfortable, although we don't hear that from that kidney. <laughs> but to purify and transform our mind, don't you think? That's why we came to the spiritual path and try to practice. In doing so, inevitably we confront the conflict, struggles, and the doubt, all of which become opportunities to bring our experiences onto the path. Although it's not comfortable, I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first thing I would say, because I know that one very well. Then secondly, I would emphasize foundations, 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 motivations, motivations, and motivation. You know, just as a real estate agency, stress the location, 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 like when we buy a house or something like that. So the heart of the awakened path is motivation. It is the foundation of the entire spiritual journey. If we are building that beautiful palace, then we are practicing on the roof. I mean, we are trying to put the roof on, but if foundation is shaky, everything started to fall apart. Right? Then what are other foundations we know so well intellectually? We need to regularly reflect on our denunciation, bodhicitta, and the correct view of emptiness. These three are the bedrock of authentic practice. So we have to kind of check it and on a regular basis, even every day. So that's the second thing I would say. Then thirdly, conviction. So Ramachan Kappa outlines the three essential confidences or convictions that the tantric practitioners must hold on the past. You guys know what are they? thing is, that without these three, it is easy to become or easy to be overcome by doubt. This person mentioned have a strong trust in the tantric path or something. Yeah. Then how much you have a trust in the authentic masters, for example. How about the masters who present that path and the lineage that carries it down to you? And what about the confidence in yourself, your ability to traverse this journey and your inherent Buddha nature? So something like that. So it's helpful to periodically take an inventory of these convictions. Maybe one conviction is strong, but the other two, for example, are not much or something like that. You may discover the areas where trusting is lacking. Maybe we can do that right now. Whoever asked this question, I'm sure to some extent, each of you have this question, doubt. Or, for instance, we might find that our devotion to the lineage feels weak. I can get awakened. <laughs> I have a complete trust on this tantric journey. But I don't need lineage hammers. I don't need to do anything to do with them or, you know, blessing. What that? Especially in the West, we are not so familiar with that idea of the long lineage depository of blessing. So those kind of things are important to really enhance and uh, strengthen the, on this tantric journey. That perhaps uh, we think we walked on this path along and. Uh, uh, without the hoodie opening to the blessing and the love to our Lama and the lineage, I can make it or something like that. Or uh, you may notice a recurring sense of uh, inadequacy, the thought that uh, oh, I can't do it, I can do this, you know, I'm not capable, I'm not a genius, or I'm not that, I'm not this, <laughs> something like that. So this may arise from insufficient bodhicitta 
in fact, the authentic determination to persevere for the sake of all sentient beings. If we have a strong bodhicitta, like Shantideva said, declared, as long as space endures, as long as sentient beings remain, may I too remain to dispel the suffering of all beings. This kind of um, unshakable or unweaving aspiration can inspire us and uh, guide us as we navigate the challenges of the path. I think that bodhicitta is a remedy. Bodhicitta, uh, including the relative bodhicitta, altruistic intention to work for the sentient beings. Uh, of course, I have a doubt, but this is a part of a process and uh, I'm working for the happiness of all beings. That sort of sublime intention always strength. Then the ultimate bodhicitta, the correct view of emptiness. If really you are overcome by doubt, then just check it. Is there such a thing? You know, who is doubting? Who is it? <laughs> who is the one who kind of complaining this? Or what am I doubting about? Or what's the object of my doubting? Or so forth. This is a very good opportunity in a sense. If you have a strong, that sort of feeling comes up, this person has energy or something, how to work with energy or something. Yeah, energy is energy. You know, there's no content in a sense. We are the one who put the content or the meaning to that energy. Anger or something like that. That's just a simple energy. So as a tantric practitioner, we want to see, pierce through the true nature of that energy, true nature of, in this case, doubt and questions and uh, so forth. Something like that. This is a kind of interesting topic because each of us, I think, uh, come across. So maybe open up a little bit of your own experience and process, uh, be nice. Yeah, that's the process, right? That's why we practice uh, Tantra. Yeah. Doubt, doubt is in a sense good, actually in the Mahayana path. It's encouraged to bring doubt. The Buddha said, don't believe me, trust me, you know, until you really examine yourself. You know, so without the doubt, that indicating either really have a strong imprint of conviction from the past life or worked very hard in this life or met a complete perfect teacher, <laughs> no room for doubt, or something like that. Tibetans have a strong devotion, you know. This kind of question never occurred, I don't think. This is a Western question. I mean, of course, uh, if we go to a higher level, yes, in a higher context, this happens. Free fall thing, you know, emptiness, realization of emptiness. When you have realized, either go into this, uh, fear side or Buddhist side, this side. but the inner level, this is something often happens, I think, as we start practicing. I, I just generalized it. Maybe not all the Tibetans uh, like that complete confidence, but I'm just generalizing those great masters I encountered in my life. Feels like they have a complete trust. This kind of question never occur. may occur, but they can take it as they are something they want to work with and not to asking questions in a clinic <laughs> to have to get rid of. Their life is a transformation of their mind. So any kind of negative or conflict happens, then in a sense welcomed and they transform them onto the path. We are encouraged to really use our own the reasons and the logic and to come to certainty. That's why traditions really, Naranda tradition it's called, His Holiness really promotes, is about, you know, examining wisdom coming from studying, wisdom coming from uh, debating, you know, analyzing, and then finally wisdom coming from internalizing, meditating, and so forth. I think it's suitable for the Westerner because it's more intellectually oriented. At the same time, we have a tendency not to appreciate that tradition. And uh, so we don't make use of our own good rational thinking mind. We should use it. As I was saying, like for example, analyzing doubt. Doubt is just a mere name. Even this person's energy, right? So if that's just energy, how does that feel? 
you know, in our body, where it's manifesting, and what is it? Can I pinpoint? You know, if we inherently existed, always there, and we can say, oh, this is it, this is a doubt, but we cannot define it, <laughs> you know, something like that. So we make use of that strong energy as a, a tool to pierce through the real nature, ultimate nature of the I realized that we have this beautiful flow actually of starting these questions is so good because like they're so in depth, right? Kind of like there's a lot of discussion. It's a very big topic that we are able to get into. The one question contained the entire journey in mm. a sense when I try to answer to one question, if we place that in the context of a journey, we can say entire journey. For example, I just mentioned we are not yet awake. We are training, training on the path to awakening, acknowledging that, that human self and the foundation, the importance of those foundations and uh, reflecting on the foundation. Then the three convictions for the tantric practitioners and then bodhicitta and the emptiness. So everything there as a practitioner, we need to transform even one doubt or one question onto the path.